Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajati. I'm here with Evan Brand. Today, we are going to be chatting about insomnia and natural functional medicine strategies to get to the root cause. We're also going to connect in mold and insomnia too. That's a common thing that Evan is seeing in his patients and also with himself. Evan, what's going on, man? How are we doing? Hey, not too much. You know, I'm sleeping better now that I figured out the connection. My sleep was terrible. Like a year ago, I was up two, three, four times a night. And of course, my daughter was young too, and she was still waking up in the middle of the night. So at first I thought it was that, but then I noticed this really, really interesting connection between activated charcoal and improved sleep quality. And so I had the aura ring. I don't know what I did with it. I think I lost it, but I had the aura ring and I was wearing it and I would notice that my deep sleep, I would get 20 to 30 minutes mm -hmm. extra of deep sleep when I would take high dose activated charcoal. Mm. So I thought, okay. Charcoal equals Makes binding sense. to toxins equals improved sleep. What the heck's going on there? So my, my thought is, and, and there's talk about mycotoxin, which are mold toxins. There's talk about mycotoxins impairing your sleep quality and specifically down-regulating melatonin because mycotoxins are affecting the HPA axis. So that makes sense. But to me, I think there's probably the the cortisol connection, part of that HPA axis, that the toxin stimulates the nervous system. Same thing with heavy metals. Maybe we should tie heavy metals in too because charcoal could help arguably reduce metals. And we know people with heavy metals, they also have bad sleep. 100%. We talked about, or there's new theories. This is a sleep specialist at the University of Berkeley at Matthew Walker. He's been on a couple of uh, podcasts, Joe Rogan. I think Mercola has interviewed him. But he talks about the glymphatic system, which is kind of this glial cell, immune cell in the brain slash lymph. And this glymphatic system is really important for removing toxins. And a lot of these neurotoxins, they're going to be cleared out during sleep. So whether it's various beta amyloid plaques or whether it's glyphosate or various heavy metals, this glymphatic system is really ramping up during sleep. That's part of the reason why you have this neurological uh, neuroemotional repair because we're getting a lot of these toxins out via the glymphatic glial cell lymphatic system in the brain, which is really interesting. Brand new study just came out like a few days ago, October 31st. I'm going to give you the link so you mm -hmm. can have it here. It's titled uh, waves of fluid bathe the sleeping brain, perhaps to clear waste. And basically what was done I believe it was an fMRI or an E. Uh, yeah, it was both. So it looked like it was an EEG to measure the brain's electrical activity. And then also F, which is a functional MRI. And they, these researchers recorded these people while they slept in an MRI scanner, which I wouldn't want to be exposed to that amount of magnetic fields for a study, but luckily somebody did that for us. And what they found was that the cerebral spinal fluid was pumping every 20 seconds just boom and it would just pump 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 and so of course nobody knows 100 percent what that means yet but the thought is that this pumping of the fluid maybe that is the glymphatic system and now we're just now finally able to to visualize mm -hmm. it but mm -hmm. that the pumping of that fluid they think is draining out toxins at night i think it's very very powerful i know a lot of people that have done really good increasing glutathione at night taking liposomal glutathione also taking glycine has been very, very helpful at night. And part of, I think, is number one, glycine is a precursor to glutathione, right? And also glutathione is its own building block itself, which I think is going to really help upregulate this glymphatic detoxification system because the, the, the glial, the glymphatic of the glial cells and the lymph interacting in the brain, and then all of these toxins that are removed via the glymphatic system eventually reach your liver. They're all going to go back to the hepatic portal vein, which is going to go back to that big filter in the liver. And then it will all be dumped out. A lot of it will be dumped out in the kidneys and then a lot in the stool. So that's where a lot of my common recommendations for detox kind of go outside what most people think of as detox, meaning you need good digestion. If we have any gut issues or SIBO or slow motility or poor digestion, you may be reabsorbing some of those toxins especially if you have yeah. slow transit time. Yeah, well said. So that they call it enterohepatic recirculation. Basically, it's really energy intensive to create and manufacture new bile. So I don't know 
what paper I looked at that said this, but it was talking about 95% of your bile being reabsorbed and 5% of your bile being freshly made. And so when you use binders, especially if you're using like a prescription cholestyramine like I'm using, that attaches to the bile. It's a bile acid sequestrant, and that's how it works to lower cholesterol. But a lot of the toxins are in the bile. So I can tell you 100% if I take binders closer to bedtime, I don't wake up as much and the sleep is more restful and I dream more. So I've noticed a lot of that with clients too, using a lot of chlorella and different liver supports. A lot of people will say, hey, I haven't been dreaming for five, 10 years and now I'm dreaming again. So to me, I think dreaming is a good sign that you must be clearing out some brain waves. What do you think? Yep, I think it definitely is. I think you're processing a lot of the emotional stress for the day. That makes a lot of sense to me. So we're removing toxins via the lymphatic system. We talked about glycine. We talked about, you already mentioned some of the, the binders, <clears throat> like with mold. Mold could be a stressor that enters the lymphatic system. Some of these um, mycotoxins could cross the blood-brain barrier and stress out the glial cells, and, and that lymphatic system may be stressed as well. And of course, we're trying to filter all these things out, get it back to the liver and flush it out um, via the stool as well. Hence, where the cholestyramine comes in, which is a bile salt sequestering agent, like you mentioned. 5% is new. So if you can decrease that amount down, maybe only maybe 50% is new. Now you're, re, you know, you're recirculating and refiltering out and making fresh bile while that old bile is getting flushed out into the stool, which is really good. And then of course, better sleep is going to promote better memory, right? Because if we have less brain fog via the activation of the immune cells in the brain, cognitive wise, we're going to be able to have better recall. We'll be faster on our feet you'll be able to think more clearer because one of the big things in regards to brain inflammation is going to be cognitive and brain fog issues. Anything else yeah, you want to highlight there? Well, yeah, I'm going to take what you said, take it a step further. People will ask us about, well, what brain supplement can I take? What can I do to get more focus? What can I do to get more concentration? And part of that answer is to improve your sleep quality. Think people think about what supplement, what herb, you know, what drug, what stimulant am I missing? to help increase mm -hmm. my brain. It's like maybe, maybe some things, but if you're not sleeping, I don't care how much caffeine or whatever else you do, you're not going to be optimal. Correct. So of course, getting enough sleep is number one. Trying to get sleep at the right time is important because we want to sleep within our natural circadian rhythm. So cortisol naturally drops, you know, at that 10 a.m. time. And then when cortisol drops, melatonin increases. So there's this natural inverse relationship between cortisol and melatonin. And melatonin is a very powerful antioxidant. It helps stimulate that really good deep sleep. So you want to tap into it during that natural cortisol rhythm of the dropping cortisol followed by the rise in melatonin. That's very, very important. That's the reason why shift workers have the highest rate of cancer. World Health Organization put shift work in the same category as substance carcinogens, as non -sub oh, as substance carcinogens like smoking and asbestos so it's definitely toxic to your body even though it's a non-substance right i mean shift work isn't a substance it's, it's a it's a lifestyle tactic so if we can shift that that's going to be big and then of course um amino acids are going to be what you use to make a lot of your sleep hormones so the first thing i look at is how is your digestion are you eating enough protein are you vegan vegetarian are you getting enough protein number one number two are you digesting it are you assimilating it how are your stools looking are they floating at all too? Are you processing your fat soluble vitamins as well? These are really, really, really important things we want to look at when it comes to sleep because all of our neurochemicals, most are going to be made from amino acids, amino acid peptides, right? Serotonin is going to be made from tryptophan or 5-HTP. Dopamine and adrenaline are going to be made from phenylalanine and tyrosine. GABA is, you know, itself. It's gamma amino butyric acid. L-theanine plays a big role in GABA. I'm trying to think melatonin is also made from serotonin, which is made from 5-HTP and tryptophan. Anything else you wanted to highlight on the protein connection there? Yeah, you need some B6 too as your B cofactor. B6. B6 is a very important cofactor that's involved in the synthesis. If you have, enough, if you have a lot of these amino acids there, but not enough B6, you're not going to have this synthesis happen. It's like having a whole bunch of wood, um, and it's like having a whole bunch of wood that's wet. And then you have the flame. Well, you, you need dry wood, right? So it's a really important cofactor to that equation. So that spark takes. And we'll, and we'll ask people that too. So when we look at the urinary organic acid test, we can measure the B6 levels. And I'll ask people, hey, look, your B6 is really low. How's your sleep? And I would say nine times out of 10, people say my sleep is not good. And the 
other brain chemistry markers may look okay, like serotonin may look adequate, but if you're not having that cofactor, I think of it like the spark plug, really. If you don't have the spark plug to make the melatonin, then adequate serotonin may be helpful for mood, but your sleep could still suffer. Correct. Yep, 100%. So we talked about the amino acids. Uh, I would say blood sugar is a really important thing. Now, there's a lot of people doing a whole bunch of fasting, which I think is, it ha can have some good benefits as long as we're getting enough nutrition. Right, there's a fine line between fasting and anorexia. I mean, you tell me, what's the definition of anorexia? It's essentially starving, right? Getting an inadequate amount of calories, right? It's an eating disorder. Well, if you're fasting to the point where you're getting an inadequate amount of calories, well, that means you're automatically getting an inadequate amount of nutrition. I mean, if your calories are cut in half, how do you get enough nutrition? It, I think it's impossible. Now, if you're doing lots of organ meat and lots of nutrient-dense foods and bone broth and green juice, um, you know, really good organic greens, you, you know, you have at least a head start there, but your body still needs enough overall calories. Calories are energy, and if we're eating whole food nutrient-dense calories, calories are attached to nutrients. In this day and age, though, it's possible, especially with Halloween, to get a whole bunch of calories and very low amount of nutrition. So you could have a lot of calories and low nutrition, but if you don't get enough calories, it's going to always be difficult to have adequate amount of nutrition. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, you're pointing out the fact people will just, when they go into a fasting protocol for cognitive benefits or try to lose weight, they may just pull a meal completely out. So they'll just not eat breakfast. Now they're only eating two meals a day, but they did nothing to replace those nutrients they lost at breakfast. And especially if they've added in some exercise or they're doing some resistance training, that could be an extra stressor on top of that. So you really have to look at your nutrition, run it through a chronometer, just double check to make sure you're getting enough because if you aren't getting enough, that's also a stressor. So you're now trying to make your body less stressed by fasting and giving your tummy a chance to rest while at the same time you're adding more stress and that could create some cortisol surges at the wrong times. It may even create a little bit of a hypoglycemic drop at night. And those hypoglycemic drops can stimulate cortisol and adrenaline to pick up that low blood sugar. So that's always a possibility if you're waking up in the middle of the night. So you have going to sleep and then you have waking up in the middle of the night. And so waking up in the middle of the night, a lot of times could be a blood sugar thing. It could also be a gut or a liver thing, right? That liver hours between one and three, it could possibly be connected with that as well. Yeah, I've had people do this experiment where we'll give them a liver tincture, like a milk thistle, shijanja berry combo, or we'll do some encapsulated liver support before bed. And a lot of times that will improve that 1 to 3 a.m. wake up time. So yeah. Chinese you, medicine's right. Chinese medicine's who said, oh, it's got to be the liver. It has a circadian rhythm. And it's true. Yeah, I mean, taking some activated charcoal, because when that liver and gallbladder pump stuff out, that activated charcoal sitting in your tummy and it's kind of soak it up. It also giving some glutathione and glycine before bed, if that helps, you know. And like you mentioned, giving some liver tonifying herbs, like whether it's chisandra or milk thistle or um, artichoke or dandelion, just things to naturally support the liver gallbladder, that's a good sign that there could be a toxicity issue as well. Yeah. So the blood sugar piece is great. I love how you tied it into the adrenals. So I mentioned the organic acids, how we're looking at some brain chemistry markers there that could affect sleep. But in terms of saliva and or urine testing, we may be looking at that to measure that cortisol. Yep. And a lot of times we'll see that inverse pattern where you've got that spike of cortisol at night. And then it's always up to us as the practitioners to try to tease that out and determine, well, what caused this evening spike? Was this someone who was looking at a bright blue iPhone screen before they collected the urine? Were they... You know, because the lab will tell you on the instructions, if you read them correctly, it says don't be around a lot of bright lights at night because we want to try to get an accurate picture of whether the body's doing this or was this some type of environmental exposure that caused a cortisol spike. Exactly. We talked about how important the toxic exposure is. So if there's heavy metals or mold issues or the mycotoxins, which stem off from mold, and there's hundreds of mycotoxins, right? So if you have a mold issue, is it's always pretty safe to assume there's probably some kind of a mycotoxin exposure. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. And then we have just, you know, lifestyle strategies. Like, for instance, if my son uses the iPad, we try to let him use it in the first half of the day. What we do is we put the blue light filter on, so there's no blue light, and then we cut down the screen intensity by about 80 to 85%. So it's like, it's really faint. You could barely see it. He doesn't notice it. Um, that way, if he has it a little bit closer, I don't have to fight with him. It's like, all right, the intensity's down 90%. We filled it out, you know, most of the blue light. And it's at least a good strategy in the meantime while we put a timer on it. Do you have any strategies like that that you use for your kids? Yeah, so... 
my daughter likes to watch a show that's called Daniel Tiger, which is like a PBS. Yeah, my son watches show. that too. So uh, luckily, when I made a custom manufacturer of some blue light glasses, um, my buddy Matt, who made those, he also had access to some kids frames. So we got him to make some kids frames, kind of like hipster looking blue blockers for my daughter that fit her perfectly, like toddler size. So that's what she wears. If it's any time, anywhere even close to the sun going down, she's got the glasses on while she watches that. They have TV filters that you can buy. So Richard Hansler, the PhD guy, he's in his 90s now who makes like the low blue light bulbs. They make TV filters that you could put over the screen, but our TV is like a 52 inch and they only go up to like a 45 inch or something. So it just wouldn't work. And it'd be annoying. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Just wear glasses. It's like, you can fit these screens or you can fit these screens. It's exactly. Like, you know, with my son, there's no way I'd ever get him to keep glasses on. Like that would be like an absolute, <laughs> that'd be futile. But and like, he might for, like him though. He might once, what at uh, first, not was yet. Little, <laughs> no, maybe he was a little older. There was a little battle at first. But we just told her, hey, look, if you want to watch this, you got to have these on. And, and she was like, okay. And she was pretty compliant. But um, so, so you're asking other strategies. We basically either use Edison bulbs, like the little old school Edison. Yeah, filament, like in, incandescent one. Yeah, where it's really warm, a really yep. warm color at night. More orangey or, color at night, yep. Or just the salt lamps. We'll just use salt lamps. So the really salt lamps are good. incandescent bulb. Yeah. So for us, same thing. I just find it's easier to put an app on your phone. I mean, with an iPhone, you have night shift, right? And I just have night shift on all the time. And then I just cut the intensity, right? Because if, if you have a little bit of blue light there, but then I cut the intensity down 80%, well, whatever blue light is left is now down 80%. So I just cut the intensity down, put, keep night shift on all the time. And that's like an easy, good strategy. There are other apps that you can download that would, you know, even knock out even more blue light. Like with my iPhone here, I have the new iPhone 11 Pro. And at nighttime, if I really want, I have it set up. So if I hit the side button now three times, boom, boom, boom. Now nice. every ounce of blue light is knocked out. Yeah, people that are listening on audio, they can't see, but his, his screen is like blood red. So blood red. Now, is that, again, is that a special app to do that little bump, 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 and then red? Is that an app or is that something built in that you can do? It's in the settings and then you can go in there and this used to be the home button down here. So the new iPhone 11, I'm not loving it yet, but there's no home button. So the side button is the, the new home button essentially, or it replaces it. And there's a way where you can say, okay, if you triple tap the home button or the side button, then you can make the screen change colors. And I'll try to find the article of how to do that. We'll put it in the description. So this is nice at night. So if I'm looking at something right before bed, or if I want a nightlight for my son, right? Yep. Or if we're looking at something, you know, on the on the, the the phone with my son, pictures, I can just knock out every ounce of red light. So that, I have a blue light, so that it's pure red light. So that's a really nice feature. And then if I want it back. Boom, boom, boom. Now it's back. Yeah, I've replaced so. the. Uh, you know, I'll, you shouldn't be really eating before bed, but sometimes I'll have to go and get like some type of drink out of the fridge at night. So I actually took the LEDs that were super, super blue and replaced those with incandescent bulbs in the, uh, in the fridge and freezer. Uh, our friend Luke Story, he went like above and beyond. He's like got red lights and everything, like red lights in his oven and red lights in his fridge. It's like, man, you shouldn't be up that late at night anyway. So to me, I don't care about doing that because I'm going to bed when it's dark. So it I'm just depends. Eat. It just depends how bad your how stressed your nervous system is. So like for me, if I get exposed to a little bit of light before bed, it doesn't affect me whatsoever. Now I try to keep everything down. So we'll have a fireplace on at night for most of our light. Um, if I use lights, I have dimmer switches on all key rooms at night so I can knock down the light at least 80%. So I at least have 20%. I've stubbed my toe a couple times, not fun. I do have the low blue light night bulbs in all of my kids' rooms and our rooms, so I will use that for like the bathroom, and I do have that. And then my son does have a nightlight on. We put it on a little bit because we have this little baby Einstein thing, which makes pure blue light, by the way. Oh, <laughs> but really? He yeah, so he loves it, but we find that if we put a nightlight in there, he'll whack the Einstein much less, so then there's less blue light coming out because it's just a pure orange light. So we use the lowbluelight.com nightlight, in all the rooms and that's just absolutely amazing. So for parents listening, lowbluelights.com is gonna be excellent, get the night bulb. Uh, try to have good dimmer switches on all key rooms. And then the easiest thing is if you're really that sensitive, just wear glasses. Cause when you have the glasses and you're, you're, you're pretty, 
you're pretty dialed in. Now, I get it. There's research showing that if it hits your skin too, it could definitely, you know, create some stress response, but it just depends upon how bad or how stressed your nervous system is. Your nervous system is designed to adapt to stress. So if you're really stressed, okay, fine. If you're kind of in between, you may not need to go to all those extremes. So just do your best. Yes. And for moms listening, it's been shown that the melatonin goes through the breast milk. So young children, they can't manufacture their own melatonin. So they're getting melatonin through, uh, through, through your breast, if you're breastfeeding, which hopefully you are, if you're able to. Uh, and so I'm trying to pull it up now, but uh, Richard Hansler, who we spoke about, he's the low blue lights guy. He's done some books on this and he, and this has been like five, six years since I spoke with him, but he's got books about the blue light connection to autism, bipolar disorder, uh, reduction in cancer. We've already talked about that. Uh, yeah, he just, he calls it the silent killer, you know, concussions and how, uh, avoiding blue light is super important when you're trying to recover from concussions as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it's an important topic and this is not something that was around a long time ago, like, you know, 50 years ago, even there weren't led bulbs. You had incandescents where the blue was much, much less. I bought, you were talking about a nightlight. I bought the little mini Amber flashlight. It hooks up to a nine volt battery. So if we're like trying too. to find, so if we're trying to find a pacifier in the middle of the night, we could just turn that on instead. Yeah, I have that too. But for the most part with the iPhone doing this going all red, that kind of replaces it. Cause I'm like, okay, this is just really easy. That is that's you know, great. knocking it all red out. So that's knocking all the blue out. So I like that. So we talked about the diet and lifestyle strategies. Um, I think that's really important, especially when it comes to your kids. I think some of the apps on the phones can be helpful. Uh, obviously big things like when I give my son his iPad to watch so I can have a little bit of sanity and watch a show with my wife. We put it on airplane mode. We turn Bluetooth off, right? We try to keep a lot of the EMF out. All those things can be helpful. I try to put it on top of a pillow. So I'll put a pillow on his lap yeah. and then put the, the iPad on top of the pillow. That way it's not up against, you know, any, any private areas. You don't want that. So those are all good, helpful strategies. Anything else you want to say about that, Evan? Just the testing piece we hit on like organic acids where we're measuring brain chemistry to try to help people resolve this issue. Yes. We talked about cortisol, either saliva or urine. And then you mentioned the gut. So gut infections playing a role. I, I know when I had parasite infections, people say that parasites are more active at night and parasites are more active on a full moon. So if you notice that you or your kids are getting worse sleep around a full moon, it's possible that it's related to the gut. So we would be looking at some functional stool testing to try to investigate this problem. Yeah. Functional medicine, we're going to plug in some of the organic acids or some of the intercellular nutrient tests to assess nutrients. We're going to look at infections that can be overly stimulating. We're going to look at either some of the Dutch hormone testing or some of the salivary hormone testing to assess cortisol. And then also women, if you're having issues, especially where it's more cyclical, progesterone is a big part of GABA. And GABA really helps you shut down and relax your nervous system. So if you have a lot of stress going on there, your progesterone could be part of the problem. And part of that is progesterone is a precursor to cortisol. So if you're under a lot of stress, your progesterone will drop and estrogen dominance is a natural side effect. So that's a big part on the hormones. And then blood sugar could be a stressor. So you mentioned not eating before bed. Some people that have blood sugar issues, they may do better eating before bed. They may, they may do better having more carbs at night. Um, also, blood sugar stress can lower magnesium. Magnesium is a really important cofactor for blood sugar. So if we have a lot of up and down blood sugar fluctuations and we're constantly kind of react, reactive hypoglycemic, that means you eat some carbs, blood sugar goes up and then it crashes down with too much insulin because of the blood sugar being off with the carbs, you're going to deplete some of your magnesium too. And magnesium is really important for promoting relaxation before bed and yeah, during the day point. in general. Yeah, good point on the mineral depletion because that's a stress. You mentioned it's a stress. You're going to yep. kind of burn up those reserves because of that crisis of blood sugar getting too low. So what's the remedy? Well, I mean, hopefully your adrenals are strong enough to handle going from, say, 6 p.m. dinner to 8 a.m. breakfast. But if you're not, then you may need to do some type of bedtime snack, exactly. like a mm -hmm. little piece of grass-fed jerky or maybe a scoop of almond butter or something like that. It's relatively easy. Yeah, a lot of times I'll do um, some vitamin C, some powder vitamin C and some collagen. And then I'll, I'll, I've been doing a little bit of um, brain glandular tissue before bed. We talked about that. That's really kind of helped with um, dreams. That's kind of interesting. 
And I think dreams do have a kind of a way of processing a lot of the emotional stress throughout the day. So we'll do some brain glandular tissue. I'll do vitamin C and collagen before bed. Sometimes I'll take some probiotics before bed too. So I like that. It's kind of a nice little cocktail for me. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I usually do my brain in the morning, but I might need to try it at night because you are getting some of that pineal gland in there. Exactly. Yep. I think that's really good. And there's some really good, um, there's some really good CDs and music you can listen to before bed too. I'm pretty sure it's either Delta or Theta. I forget which ones are, is the big sleep wavelength. Uh, I think I it believe may be. Delta is your, your deep. Theta is where people meditate, I believe. Delta is like your super deep wave. Not 100%, sure. I'll figure it out here. But there's lots of ways that you can um, download specific music, even just on YouTube. And that will help promote that frequency. I'll pull it up here in just a second. Yeah, yes. so uh, delta or slow wave sleep. So delta is going to be the big one. Yeah, so delta is going to be the sleep. So you can easily go on YouTube or just go online and you can get delta wavelength. There's also bionic beats. You can get different bionic beats as well, which are very, very helpful for promoting relaxation. So if you're more stressed, you can go and download some delta type music or bionic beats that may even incorporate delta type music. That's very helpful to promote good parasympathetic nervous system response. And if you have a hard time going parasympathetic, be very careful with exercise too close to bed because that will ramp up your sympathetic response and it may take you a while to turn off. So you may be too revved up with that sympathetic response. So things that I'll do to help kind of calm down is GABA. I'll do higher dose ashwagandha, higher dose phosphorylated serine, higher dose of magnesium. And to accelerate it, you could do a magnesium foot bath, like Epsom salt, which is magnesium sulfate. And then you could also do a, which, a foot bath or a full bath magnesium sulfate to really stimulate magnesium absorption. Good. Yeah, I'm also a big fan of lemon balm. We'll throw that into the mixture. You could use yep. passion flower. You could use hops. You could use catnip. You could use skull cap. Valerian's great for some, not good for others. Motherwort is my favorite. I love motherwort for heart palps, especially if you've got that kind of a worried, anxious mind, you're overthinking, you're ruminating, motherwort will settle that down. I've actually measured, I put my uh, heart rate monitor on and measure my heart rate variability and it increased about five minutes after I took a shot of motherwort. So that's, they call it like bypass in a bottle because it helps so much with the heart issues and circulation problems. So that's another side benefit. And I'm glad you brought up the, the brain waves because some people may benefit and they may need if their nervous system is screwed and herbs can't fix it alone, meditation, et cetera, can't help, nature walks. They may need some brain training, you know, like some neurofeedback could be very helpful to try to get you more in those theta, like tranquil state or more the, the deep delta state. Yeah, and easy for that is you can get the inner balance, the new M wave plug and then you can plug it right into your phone and that kind of gives you almost an hrv and then you can do five seconds in five seconds out breathing wise all to the nose can be very helpful and you could put it on and you could just pinch it to your ear have, like have this you, have you have you tried different types of breathing strategies to see which increases your hrv score the best um i just do five in five out there are some different ones using box breathing where you do four in so it's and then you hold for seven and then out for eight. So it's a four, seven, eight. And that's been very helpful for just kind of relaxing and tranquilizing the nervous system. And again, that seven, in, that seven hold, it does something with increasing CO2. Ah. The hold is what's increasing the CO2 and then followed by the out. And you try to make almost all of that you know, through the nose. On the outside, it's going to be probably okay going to the mouth, but try to go as much of the nose as possible. Yeah, tapping is good too. You know, you could do some herbs, take a shot of some herbs, and then tap, 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 calm the nervous system down. We know you can shift into parasympathetic that way too. Yeah, I mean, the big thing with tapping is if there's things on your mind that are just bugging you and you're just you're kind of ruminating on it, this is where tapping is the best. So I just take, all right, I'm going to take three to five minutes and I'm going to just think about, and maybe I'm just going to have a conversation about all the things that are bothering me. And I'm going to just talk about the emotion. Hey, this conversation I had with this person today really, really pissed me off, right? I felt very irritated. I felt very anxious. And you may just talk about what happened and just talk about the emotion and then just kind of go through and tap all the major points. I double tap it because I just feel like it's really effective. And then once I have, you know, once I have that like 
let's say I'm at a seven, once I drop below a five or a four, or I, ideally to a three, once I have that big drop in my emotions and I just don't care, it's like, okay, whatever, that's where I'll, I'll kind of you know, go into prayer or go more into meditation or go more into um, just gratitude and thankfulness. It's hard. It's hard to be thankful and, and focus on what you want when you're pissed off. So these are good strategies to kind of just calm down. Once you're calm, then you can focus on, you know, the things you got to do tomorrow, which I'm not a huge fan of doing that too much. I think what you're better off doing is before you go to bed, have like your little app on your phone or some paper and write down the top three things, right? Boom. Then, hey, it's there. You downloaded it. It's there. And then you can come to it tomorrow. You don't have to worry about it. And then you go into kind of appreciation, gratitude and focus on what you want to manifest, those kind of things. So the more you can kind of create parasympathetic is better. So I use the tapping to, to decrease the stress first and then go into what I want to manifest. If you're too stressed, it's too hard to do that. Yes, it hard. is. You're exactly right. I had a client last week tell me that her husband would always get mad when he would see her tapping because he would assume that she was tapping because she was pissed at something he did. I'm like, that guy needs to get over himself. You're just tapping to help yourself. And so she kind of laughed at that. Yeah, it could be something from work. It could be, and, and who knows? It, it could have been like, maybe they had a little bit of a conversation before bed. And um, either way, um, does, it's not a sign of whether you're right or wrong in an argument because you could still be stressed, you know, and you have to yeah. decrease that stress from whatever that conversation was. Maybe it was just a really intense conversation about, you know, family, right? Okay, let's, let's calm it down and get into that parasympathetic. I think it's a good rule is just, you know, no, no strenuous conversation within an hour or two before bed. It's Absolutely. A pretty good rule. Yeah. Yeah. Money and moving and travel and anything super intense. Yeah. I'd probably save it for, for waking hours. It's hard sometimes though. Cause if you're waking up early and you don't see your wife to the next day or vice versa, it's like, well, you, you got to put it out there. Cause you need, you know, you need to address it, but it's tough. You try to do your best. It's always a balance. It'd be interesting to hook ourselves up to like an EEG machine and see what our brainwaves are doing while we're doing a podcast together. I bet we're, I I'm sure we're both probably in the beta state, like the fully alert, awake beta, uh, but it'd be interesting. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I agree. Well, anything else you want to kind of dive into here? I'm just trying to connect the functional medicine, the nutrition, the blood sugar, I'm trying to prime in some of the labs that we can do to dive in deeper. If people are listening to this and they're like, okay, I've tried some of these diet and lifestyle strategies. I want to dig in deeper. Feel free, reach out to Evan at evanbrand.com. Reach out to me, Dr. J at justinhealth.com. Feel free and schedule with us if you want to dive in deeper to address some of these root cause issues. Anything else you want to say, Evan? Well, CBD, since CBD is so popular and trendy, I've used it. I, I mean, I take CBD all the time just because I have access to a lot of different companies that have sent me stuff. I haven't noticed a huge difference, to be honest. You know, I play with the dosing and, and this and that, but... I think if you're just doing straight CBD without a tiny bit of THC as kind of the entourage effect, which helps it work better, I just don't think it's a huge needle mover. People may argue, oh, CBD is a miracle. I mean, I've done a lot of high grade brands and higher doses. And without the THC, I've just not noticed much benefit. So people that do report relief and like pain relief that allows them to sleep better, it's always going to be more like an edible version versus like a sublingual version. So if you're going to go for that, you know, you may want to do something that goes to the gut as opposed to just doing like a, like a soft gel versus vaping or smoking soft gel under the tongue. Those type things may work a little better. 100%. So CBD, I find it can be relaxing for me, but not, any more than like magnesium or something nutritional. So I'd rather just use a nutrient over, anytime I could use a, nutri a, a nutrient over like an herb that may not be a root cause kind of thing, I'll always stick with the nutrient. Um, I have found really good success. Like if I have, you know, words with my wife or getting the stressful thing before bed, ashwagandha and magnesium are just like, they are my jam. They work really, yes. really well. Um, and tapping can be a little bit helpful. And then of course, white noise. Uh, white noise is great. For the most part, I have my Austin Air crank it up on the highest setting. That makes a really good bit of white noise. I have the white noise app on my phone. This is the one that I use. I'm going to hold it up so people can see it. If you're driving, don't worry. Look at the link later. And yeah, what's it titled? He, yeah, it's actually just called white noise. So I'm going to just um, pull up the picture of the app so y'all can just see what it looks like. And then I've tried over the years all kinds of different like noises. So I'll tell you exactly what I use. That's, an, a very, that's a very astute comment that you made, that you would rather use a nutrient over an herb. I love that. That makes total sense because yeah. it's, 
you're not just like sedating yourself. You're actually giving the body a nutrient to calm down. For example, this magnesium versus a CBD. I think that's just wonderful. Exactly. I totally agree, man. Glad that you appreciate that. So I do, I do the paid one, the white noise here. There's a, you'll see one in pink or red and then one in reddish pink and then one in blue. So I paid the $2 and it's great. And that's the one that I use. And I'll show you the exact setting I use. I do brown noise. So the first couple of years I used it, I did white noise. Okay. Here's white. Kind of a little hissy high pitch. Uh -huh. And then I went to pink because I saw some data on pink for a while being very helpful for sleep waves, which is okay. It's okay. And then I went to brown because it was just a little bit softer. So here's brown. Just a little bit softer. So I like brown. And then there's also a violet, I think. Oh, this, is, this is blue. So too high pitch, too hissy for me. And then violet was also very hissy. Yeah, it doesn't really, really come through too good on the, uh, on the recording. So people have to just look up the app and check it out. Is that coming in there at all? Oh, there you go. Yep. Okay. So that's, that's Violet. And I think your microphone switched over to your, uh, your headset instead of your big microphone too. Maybe it caught your, unless I'm hearing things. No, that's still going good. Okay, good. No, I'm still good. So that's Violet. That's blue. That's pink. That's brown. Yeah, I like brown. Less harsh than pink. I hear and the that's difference. That's white. So yeah. my favorite, number one's brown, number two's pink. There's some data. There's some data on pink being very beneficial for sleep waves. Probably brown as well. I haven't looked at it, but brown's just the nice, the most softest thing. And then um, also, if you want, they have one. Fans are just really nice too. So they have a good. Now here's fan. the question. So um, you can listen to a fan too, like that. And so um, the nice thing is, if you if you sleep with your wife or a partner, guess what? You just get the same app and you synchronize it. So she'll have her phone on in the, in the corner across the room on airplane mode. I'll have mine as well. And then it's synchronized. But it becomes not that big of a deal because the Austin Air, that loud setting is so loud and it's, it's so nice that that's enough most of the time. Exactly. That's what I was going to ask is do you set a timer for that? Like are you noticing any benefit on leaving that on? I just was curious if you're exposed to that noise all night versus just long enough to get you to the sleep state. All night. All night. I keep it in my bathroom. My wife's sleeping in um, my son's room just because of breastfeeding and, you know, having to wake up a couple of times that makes it easier on her and then also on me. So I'm not getting disturbed. So she, she'll have it. She won't have it on now because she needs to hear my son. Um, but when she comes back to the room, she'll definitely synchronize it up. But the Austin air has been pretty darn good. But when we travel for sure, it's on 100%. Yeah, I love the Austin too. It's a nice sound. The molecules too. Molecule for one, it's you got the stupid blue light you the have light. to turn off at Eat night. The light. And the sound. It sounds more like a vacuum on a low speed rather than the Austin is yep. just a more comforting fan sound. Austin is the best sounding air filter out there. It has no light on it, which is awesome. And the next thing is the the little Turner guy. I wish they made out of metal. You know, we talked about that. It's made out yeah. of plastic, the little switch. But the cool thing is you can put a setting on and then pull it off. So if you have kids that are monkeying with stuff, you just pull it off, put it up high, and then you, they can't touch it. So that's kind of nice yep. too. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, let's wrap this thing up. But wrap if you up. want to reach out clinically, Justin's website is justinhealth.com. And we can definitely help with sleep issues. But I'm going to tell you straight up, your sleep issues are going to surprise you, meaning what – he or I uncovers, mm -hmm. that's going to surprise you because mm -hmm. you're going to come and you're going to think, oh, I just have sleep issues. And then we're going to reveal you. No, it's, it, it, yeah, you do have sleep issues, but it's because of X, Y, Z. And that's the fun part is getting to the root cause of this stuff. So that's what we do every day, all day. We live and breathe this stuff, literally. Exactly. And if you guys are enjoying this information, give us a share, a thumbs up, put your comments below. Let us know what you guys have done regarding sleep, regarding functional medicine and nutrition for your sleep. What's worked for you? And then if you guys are really enjoying this, give us a share and also write us a review, justinhealth.com slash iTunes, evanbrand.com slash iTunes. We appreciate your feedback and getting this out there so more people can help improve their health. We really appreciate it, y'all. Yep, take care. My website, if you want to reach out, is evanbrand.com. So justinhealth.com, evanbrand.com. And we look forward to helping you. So take good care. You guys have a phenomenal day. Take care, y'all. Bye. Bye-bye.